All right, welcome back to the next training. Here we're gonna be talking all about the inspector. For both video clips as well as audio, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the necessary adjustments to all of your clips. So first let's talk about the transform tool. Now to get to this, we're going back to the inspector, double click our clip, and we can see transform right at the top. We've talked a little bit about it in other videos, but this is where you can essentially resize your video, zoom in, zoom out, just make sure you stick to the framing of your actual video so you don't get unwanted black bars. You can also go in and rotate and you can of course use these sliders or punch in a specific value here to the right. So if I wanted to go, uh, you know, 25% further in, so I'm gonna go 125 and that's going to cut in. You can also hit this little reset button, put it right back to its default value. You can also flip an image horizontally or vertically. And if you do zoom in and you want to reframe, you can do that by grabbing the position tabs, your X axis going left and right, Y going up and down. Now the compositing tool is basically how you want to blend a clip to your overall project. Now right now you can see this clip is on the bottom video layer of our project, which means if I turn down the video opacity, it's just going to go to black. So while that may be something you're going for, maybe you're putting a title on top and so you don't want the background to be distracting, you can lower the opacity uh, to still have your clip be there and play, but it's not going to be as like in your face. It makes it nice for uh, graphics and titles to pop up on. But another way to use blending modes is maybe you want to show multiple things at once in kind of a creative way. For example, uh, maybe while someone is, uh, you know, I don't know what it's called, flipping the pan or, you know, whatever they're doing there. Uh, and then this is either basting, I think that's what that's called. I don't know. Maybe we wanna see these things happen together. So I can actually put these clips on top of each other. And if I were to just play it back, of course, you're just gonna see what's on the top layer as you normally do. But what I can do is go back into my inspector in my compositing mode and I have a bunch of different options. I can just lower the opacity and that is going to uh, show basically both of them at 50%. Or you can use one of the blending modes which will give you various different effects. If you've ever used something like Photoshop or any other photo editor, you've probably used blending modes. And what's nice is if you just hover your mouse over each one, you will see how it interacts with the image. And these are just various ways to blend your top layer into your bottom layer. So overlay is a very important one, uh, soft light, hard light. These are all basically just different ways that it will kind of take the light values and blend them together. So you just figure out which one uh, is the vibe you are going for. And that's how you can blend clips together. All right, so now let's talk about stabilization. This is another tool you may use a lot if you are a handheld shooter. In this clip, for example, it's not bad by any means, but if we play it, we can see there's definitely some uh, shake going on there. Whoops, start playing back from the beginning. So if I play this here, you can see there's there's some wobble going on there, and maybe we want it to look basically like a tripod shot, like it's not moving at all. We're gonna go back to our inspector, and about halfway down, we'll see stabilizations turned off. Now, as soon as I flip this switch here, you will see this little loading bar going up, and it's essentially analyzing the clip and basically just looking at what it can stabilize. Now it's gonna to default to, I believe always 10 or around 10 on a smoothness scale. So what you wanna do is just see what the default looks like. You can see that it punched in a little bit because the center point of your image is always gonna be the most stable. So the more shaky a clip is, the more it's going to crop into that image. So we can look at it here. It's pretty good, pretty good, not bad. Let's see what happens if we wanna bring up the smoothness level. You can see it's cropping in even more, but maybe maybe we're okay with that. See how much smoother it is in the middle, but we are cutting off his hair a bit, so we don't, we don't want that. So now let's talk about this edge processing here. If you put it down to zero, we're no longer uh, cropping into the image, and right now everything looks fine and normal because we have our edge processing set to reflect. If I were to change it to none, 
you'll actually see the black bars and you can basically, it gives you an eye into how it stabilizes that image. If I hit play, you can see it essentially moves the clip in kind of 3D space so that it uh, is keeping the center of the frame, you know, in the middle and to our eyes, it makes it look like it's stable and less shaky. But of course, it'd be distracting to see those black bars uh, show up. So edge processing takes care of that. And every clip is going to be different. Uh, the reflect is probably the default, but you can also see how extend does kind of uses uh, artificial intelligence to extend the pixels kind of like content aware in Photoshop. Uh, you can also do reflect or you can use title basically just see whichever one works best for you probably the reflect uh, or the extend are probably the best options for this. But now, even though we're not cropping in at all, we still don't see those black bars. All right, so now let's talk about lens distortion. So a lot of times with lower end wide angle lenses, especially action cams like GoPro, you get pretty gnarly distortion when you're filming. So you can see here, we all know the earth is round, but it shouldn't look uh, like this when you take a picture of it, right? So it's very distorted. We have the horizon line bending all over the place. And basically all of the lines in the video have some level of uh, curvature to them. So we want to kind of straighten that out, fix it. It doesn't look very cinematic or very good. So when we double click on the clip and head over to the lens correction, uh, we can basically tell it what camera it is. And I believe this is from a GoPro Hero 7, but you can see some other options there. And automatically, you can see that it's adjusted it a little bit. If I turn lens correction on and off, you can see that it's kind of straight in the horizon line already a little bit. And GoPro has a lot of different ways to view the footage. And so you can basically tell it what you want here. And we're just gonna adjust the level manually ourselves. And you can see if I go to the right, we basically head back towards the uh, the default. This is basically like no adjustments. But if we start to go to the left, you can see it basically pull those lines as high up as it can. So now there's still a little bit of curvature, but it looks much more natural. Uh, and all of the lines in here look so much better. So if we play it back, this looks so much better. If I turn lens correction on and off, you can see that everything on the edges of the frame as well as our horizon line look so much better than before. All right, so now let's talk about drop shadow. It's something that uh, definitely can add some separation from your background when adding titles. Uh, and it's something that's very simple to do, but we don't notice it in our uh, inspector panel over here when we double click on our text. So where do we find it? It's under the advanced tab in the title advanced inspector. And so this is again going to bring up a whole different uh, interface that we can do a lot more with. And if we scroll down on the left hand side here, you will see text shadow be a part of the options. And so if we turn that on, you may not immediately see anything uh, show up depending on the text style that you have. And that's probably because the distance is set to zero or near zero. And so if I were to exaggerate this and put this out there, you can now see the drop shadow uh, quite easily back there. So, you know, <laughs> most of the time you don't set it this far apart away, but maybe just offset a little bit. And I personally like to blur them out quite a bit. You can change the color. Traditionally, you do black, but, you know, you can go whatever color you want. It's your video. If you want to go white, go with it white. We can change the positioning of the drop shadow. You can make it almost like a reflection. You can, I usually like the bottom right for some reason. You can also take inspiration from your shot. And let's say in this drop shadow, it makes sense if the sun was coming from the top left of screen, uh, it would create that kind of drop shadow if it were black in the bottom right. You can also adjust the opacity. You know, 100% usually can look kind of a little bit too much. You can see there that it just adds a little bit of separation, a little bit of depth, and overall drop shadows can be a really nice addition to your graphics, your text, 
So next, let's talk auto enhance. Now, if you want to learn all about color grading, we made another video on that. But for the sake of auto enhance, it is a fast and easy way to just kind of add some contrast and just add some extra pop to your image. And it's really simple to do. Head into your inspector and then all the way at the bottom, you'll see auto enhance. Turn that on. And it's basically just this one slider that you can drag uh, to the left or right. And all the way to the left is going to basically be nothing. Uh, and you can see this image still has a little bit more flatness to it. There's not a whole lot of contrast. And as we go to the right, it doesn't look terrible. It's not going overboard, but it does add a nice amount of contrast if I turn this on or off. It's subtle, but it at the same time makes a fair amount of difference. And I really like Filmora's Auto Enhance because there are some software out there that go overboard with it. And this is uh, a really nice, pleasing uh, way to enhance your footage quickly. So we've taken a huge look into the video inspector page, but what about audio? Well, if you have music or dialogue, like I have this voice, uh, this is a, I just recorded very quickly. A very cool feature to add into your videos. And if we want to see the inspector and all of our editable uh, options for this, we are going to double click and it's going to look different than our video inspector page by having a meter on the left-hand side. If I were to play this audio again, it basically shows you the audio levels or how loud the audio is. This is a very cool feature to add. And what you want to avoid is what's called clipped audio, which is where when you play it, it's basically jammed all the way up here at the top. I recorded it uh, obviously in a good way and so it doesn't clip. But the basic general rule of thumb is you just wanna to go to the loudest part of your video and as long as it's not clipping, if it's still hovering, you know, somewhere in this area over here, then you have pretty good audio levels. Very cool feature to add into problem your- problem hearing. If you were to put it all the way down at like negative 30 or negative 40 decibels, People are going to be maxing out their phones, their headphones and everything and still not being able to hear you. But this is where you may want to level things out. So maybe you have like if I take this song, for example, and put it below my uh, dialogue uh, without making any changes, it sounds like this. It's a very cool feature to add into your videos, especially. You can't really understand what I'm saying, right? Because the music is so loud. Uh, and so what we would want to do here is go into the music inspector and this I may put at, you know, 25, 30 decibels. Let's hear how that sounds. This is a very cool feature to add into your video. So that's way more subtle. I could probably could bring it up a little bit. This is a very cool feature to add into your. Yeah. And so that's how you would kind of balance out those audio levels for dialogue and music. You have some other options in your inspector, like fading in and out. This can be great to do, honestly, on every audio clip because it keeps you from having little pops that can happen when you have audio suddenly start or suddenly stop. You can see that when I add a fade in or out at the end of the clip, it kind of has this curve now to it, which you can actually interact with straight on the clip. Uh, you don't just have to use the slider depending on when you want things to fade in and out. You can change your pitch if you want to sound like a chipmunk, then you can raise it. This is a very cool feature to add in. Gotta love it, or give yourself a crazy deep voice. This is a very cool feature to add. And then you have your equalizer, which kind of just varies the you know low bass, the trebles, the mids. Like It basically just adjusts everything to give your voice or music or whatever the audio is a certain vibe. And so you can kind of just play through here and see what sounds best. And here you can actually play around with the noise removal. Keep in mind, if you just go strong all the time, it may also affect the sound of your dialogue or whatever the subject of the audio is. So just kind of play around to see which one works best on each clip. And here you can play around with ducking, which is kind of similar to what we were doing where we had the dialogue on top and the music below it. You can adjust uh, lowering the volume of other clips surrounding this and play with the weakness and strength of it as well. 
and auto normalization basically just kind of evens everything out. So if you're whispering in part of the clip or and screaming at another part, it will do its best to kind of normalize it. And that way, uh, again, you don't want the person viewing your content to always be adjusting their volume, you know, raising it up or lowering it down. So auto normalization will kind of scan everything and just keep it all in the same ballpark of volume levels. All right, guys, so that is taking a look at a lot of the tools inside the inspector for both video and audio. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you like this video, keep watching because we got more in store.